All right, so moving on with week five. Um, now that we've got some more raster information under our belts, we're going to go to image restoration. And uh, these bottom two are just sort of help videos and uh, things, but this top one is a PSD file called new Delphic something template. There we go. Um, so this... We're, what we're going to be doing, and it's going to seem a little bit silly, but we are going to sort of learn some tools that can erase these cracks in here. Um, it's not... <laughs> obviously, this is an oil painting, so those of you that know your fine art are thinking this is not a thing we would ever repair. Yes, I know that. Um, this is an image chosen because it's got some very obvious breaks in it, and um, it's a little bit easier to repair than your average image. Um, I am going to go back to my cat, however, because um, I want to be able to show you uh, in broader terms how these uh, tools work. So there's a few different tools we're going to be learning, and they're at the top of these drawing tools. So there's one that looks like a rubber stamp, and there's one that looks like a band-aid. Although you might be seeing this patch tool, that might be the default that shows up. Um, and make sure that you are under either essentials or photography. Um, if you're under certain other workplaces, you may not see all of the tools. Um, so if you don't, just change what workspace you're in and you should you should be able to see uh, more of them. All right, so I've got this down to just one layer. Whatever image you're tinkering with, make sure it's on just one layer because otherwise things get very confusing. So first up, the I call it the rubber stamp tool accidentally. It's the clone stamp tool. Some people call it the clone tool. Um, but what this basically does is, I'm going to turn up my brush size. Um, by the way, the two buttons next to the letter P, the uh, bracket buttons, those are hotkeys for turning your brush up and down. If you don't like hotkeys, you can come over here, but you can't see what size it is relative to your picture until you go back over here. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, so just know that those two buttons are what I'm using to do this more quickly. So what this is going to do is we're going to select a section of pixels here and then when I draw somewhere else it's going to make exact copies of those pixels. So if I hold down alt you'll see that changes and I click and now that's the area that's been selected and you'll see my cursor now you can see the exact pixels that are about to get copied. And so if I start painting wherever, it's making an exact copy of those pixels over here. And it's drawing them out with that brush. Now obviously this is a fairly ridiculous use for this, um, but this is just to give an example. So there we go. Now, one of the things uh, that's happening is that um, this brush has separate settings over here from all your other brushes. Every tool has its own brush settings. You can have a very soft edge if you want to things. Um, so if I resample over here, see how it's not more of like a ghosted image as opposed to this uh, harsher line. Um, so you can change those settings. You can change the opacity. You can change the blend mode over here for different things. Um, but the idea behind this is to sort of completely replace certain pixels with other pixels so that they match, right? So if you are trying to get, actually, if I'm trying to get rid of this guy now, right? Maybe I don't want him to be there. I can use this tool. You gotta be careful. You can see I just accidentally stuck a new ear in here. And you can see that there's a line from the edge of the drawing, or from the edge of the... There we go. Photograph. So you can see this is a tricky business to get rid of like a large area. Um, so this is not how I would do this necessarily. Here, I'll take from this side too. Um, yeah, you can see I hit the bottom. But the reason to use this is because if I just paint with a blue brush, it's gonna just look like I painted with a blue brush. Even if I, you know, sample this and 
whatever I do, that looks fundamentally different than these pixels because there's no variation. Adding in the variation, the light variation, the color variation that you get from a photograph, digitally, like just painting that is very, 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 very difficult. Um, now, most times we're not replacing an area this large. Let me, uh, there we go. That's not what we're doing usually. Um, but you might have like one person a little bit in the background here. I'm going to sample a little bit of this. Oh, I'm in the wrong tool. There we go. So if I sample that and just put a little something there. So if I had just a little bit of something I wanted to get rid of, I could potentially borrow some pixels from somewhere. I just have to be more careful about where I borrow from so that I don't hit the edge. And we could start to repair where he was. It still looks a little pixely in part because I had the hardness turned down too much. Um, but you can kind of start to see how that m might function, at least in, in at, as a start. Oh, nope. Nope. There we go. Um, to get rid of a thing that you don't want there. So the clone stamp tool will sort of exactly copy pieces from one place to the other. The healing brush tool, not the spot one, the regular one. What this will do is it will also copy pixels, but it'll do so in a way that blends it into the new thing. So, if I choose a ridiculous example, like the cat, you can see it looks the same as the clone stamp tool, but when I do this, see how it's blended into the blue? Now, that just makes for a silly looking cat, but if I'm trying to repair the fact that I can see the seams here, this tool can help with that. Now, see, that's blended in a lot better. I got a little bit of the same kind of pattern going here. Um, I have another tool that can maybe fix that. But that's how you might get that to fix because it, it doesn't completely erase. There we go. That's better. Um, the original pixels. It blend, like, kind of makes a, a composite between the new pixels and the old ones. So that way you don't have such obvious seams on things. Now, um, let's see here. The spot healing tool, if I was to use this on the cat's eye, which you never would, but it does this. It's taking the surrounding pixels, looking at them, and using them to replace the thing in the middle that it thinks is wrong. It assumes that the thing in the middle, which in this case is the cat's pupil, is the wrong thing and it's going to replace it by looking at the other stuff. Now obviously because the cat's eyes are a different color than its like skin, um, it's not quite replacing it correctly. There we go. It takes a couple tries because the, it's turning out brown because it's, it's looking a little bit further away into the little you know notch in the cat's eye. Um, now you can see that the pattern is a little bit different. Um, you can see that in the rest of the eye there's like light dark light dark like it'll be kind of severe if you look at it pixel by pixel where the actual photograph is there's a dark pixel and then there's some really light pixels and in here it's a lot more like it's it's a lot um, less severe same here it lost some of the darker green so I would never really use the spot brush to change something that severe necessarily I'm um, sorry for the blinking. I'm trying to undo that. Um, I might use it for something like this. So if I go here, this is a little bit less of a change. There we go. And now that looks exactly like the rest of the eye. So you have to kind of pick and choose where you're going to use these tools. Um, one last thing about these tools before we actually start using them on the other thing. You saw you've probably noticed if there's a difference between how my tool is working and how yours is it's that if I sample something once and I can paint with the brush for a little bit let go and then paint a little bit more and then paint a little bit more and it's still the same alignment but some of you guys might be doing this and then doing this 
and then doing this and it keeps resetting. If you want it to stay with the same sampled setting and, and continue the same drawing like it was doing over here, you just have to click the word aligned over here. And when you do that, it means even if you pick up your brush or let go of the mouse, it will keep with the same alignment. Um, it won't reset and assume that you want to restart your drawing again. Um, I pretty much almost have this on always to the point that in class I didn't even notice it was off. Um, like I forgot it was a thing. So um, just be aware that it's whichever one you want to use, right? Um, but be aware that that's going to change how uh, the drawing works. So, all right. How does this apply to your homework? Well, step one of your homework is that we have a before version. We need an after version. So we right click, duplicate layer. We're going to call this one after, right? Before and after. And we're just going to slide this over. If you hold down shift, it'll slide over exactly. Um, we slide it using the move tool. Um, and that we do this so that we can always have an original in case we really muck up the new one, um, which which I've done. That happens. So just be aware that um, you know you kind of always want an original copy. We're gonna zoom in a little bit. So which tool to use to replace all of these cracks that we normally wouldn't anyways, but we're going to for this assignment. Well, it depends on what it is. Generally speaking. This clone stamp tool that is much too large right now, it will work pretty well for these this dark stuff, right? Like that's a pretty severe crack. There we go. But it's not really necessary for some of the lighter ones. The spot healing brush, which you don't have to just click once, like you can click and drag it a little bit. That'll work pretty well on some of this lighter stuff. We found in class that the healing brush, at least, I don't know if I have different settings than you guys here, but we were having major problems with it, like, warping the color. Yeah, you can, you might not be able to see it on YouTube, but it turned it yellow, basically, which is no good. Um, so you'll probably have to stick with the spot healing brush and the, um, the clone stamp tool. Now, a few things about the sort of special nature of this image. First off, make sure that what you're changing is an actual crack in the painting and not like the painting. So these cracks running vertically through her headband, those we probably want gone. See these dark bands going horizontally? That's part of the painting. <laughs> so we want to try to not, see, like not get rid of them. So don't, don't be doing this. And say, oh, the headband looks great. No, <laughs> that's that's not what we want to do. Uh, let me go back. There we go. Um, another thing, the spot healing brush. Make sure you're not using it over two different types of area. Because if you do that, now I've just successfully erased her eyebrow, <laughs> and we don't want to do that either. So we want to maintain the integrity of this image as much as possible while fixing the cracks in it, right? Um, so we don't want to erase the image. We don't want to erase the darks under her eyes. That'll just make her look like a weird demon. Um, we want to keep the painting intact and just get rid of the cracks. So we want, this is about being careful. Um, this is destructive editing, except for the fact that we have a before copy this is the definition of destructive editing. So um, make sure that you're checking your work and you're just click, 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 clicking and you're zooming out a little bit and kind of taking a look to see what happened. Um, oh, our headband still looks okay, right? Because if you overdo it, <laughs> there's no getting it back, right? There's no, there's not really any fixing it. So this is about, it, it, it works really well, these tools. Whoop. So it might be very tempting to just be like, click, 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 click. Oh, I fixed everything. Um, resist that temptation. Be careful, right? Because I'm going to be looking at, you know, just how, like, did, were you able to not erase too much of the image? Um, yeah. So it's just about taking it one step at a time. Eh, that doesn't look right. There we go. Um, and just being careful. 
Now, one last thing about this image and your future life as an image restorer. This is not a typical photographic image. If we look at the cat and we zoom in to the point where we can see the pixels. Actually, that's interesting. So, um, you can see there's a wide range of color, even in this. There's greens and oranges and blacks and browns and even like a few kind of red pixels. If we look at hers, it's like the same five colors. This is a scan, this is like a picture that would show up in an old timey textbook where it's the same color red pixel everywhere. It's the same color green pixel everywhere. Um, and what that means is that it's very easy to replace things because they all match, right? The pixels over here are the same colors as the pixels over here, except that this has more of the dark red ones and this has more of the light white ones and light pink ones. But it's the same color red pixel anytime a red pixel shows up. So it makes it very easy to patch up. This normal photography does not use the exact same colors. It's, it's a wider range of colors. So if you're trying to repair something in a real photograph, it's going to be more difficult. And actually, if I bring up the tool, I sampled it where she is. Um, and you can see, actually, I'm going to turn the hardness up here. There we go. You can see what a difference that is. Look at that. That's not the same type of color space at all. Like, you can look at this cat picture and still see a cat picture. You can look at this circle and be like, I don't know what that is. Um, right? So... You can, you can tell these are not made of the same thing. <laughs> um, even this blue right here, if I really zoom in, there's about 400 shades of blue in this same colored blue, you know, thing. Whereas she's made up of the same five colors. And if I zoom, even when you zoom out, you can see the, the pattern. So as you're using these tools and thinking, oh, this is going so easily, it's not. Like, that's not how usually repairing images is. This is made a little bit easier on purpose, so you can kind of find your way through. All right, so that's it on that. Make sure um, that you save it. Um, this you can flatten if you want, because um, we, I, it's just about repairing the image, so there's no real use for all the layers. So if it got to be too big a file, feel free to flatten it. Uh, but make sure you save it, make sure you put your name on it, something, something, your last name, um, and submit that uh, together with the other week five files.